Hi, in this video, I am gonna to talk to you about the trainee probation officer program, what it is, what it includes, and what will be expected of you. The reason I share this is because I'm an ex probation officer. I've gone through the program before. I now help criminology and forensic psychology graduates get into the field of probation. So if you're new here, then subscribe for more videos because I'll share tips and tricks for how to, you can actually get through the application, the interview process, all of that. And if you are already subscribed, this is my first video for a while. I've actually taken some time away. I actually practice what I preach and have a work-life balance. So let's get into your video. So I'm gonna go through actually the process of the training. And then at the end of the video, what everyone wants to know is what's the salary and what are the actual benefits when you're working there? Because come on. You want to know actually how much you're going to get paid, how much holiday and all this. So I'll tell you that at the end of the video. So firstly, I'll give you a quick overview. What is PQIP? PQIP is the Trainee Probation Officer Scheme. If you do the scheme, you will be employed by the Civil Service in the Ministry of Justice section of that. So the PQIP is basically the way that you will become from who you are now to becoming a probation officer. So they have two routes. They've got the 15 month route and I'll put some details here. So the 15 month route, you will have already had your level five um, qualification. So level five is um, a degree level, but they, you need to have done certain modules and I'm gonna put the cert certain modules here so you know exactly if you've done these modules. It's mainly people who've done criminology, criminal justice, who would have done these modules. Penal policy and punishment of offenders and the rehabilitation of offenders. So if you've covered those, it's most likely you've done either a degree in criminal justice or criminology. If you haven't, don't worry because you can still apply, you'll just do the 21 month route. When I done the training, I had a degree in psychology and criminology. So I had actually covered these modules, but my training ended up being, it was advertised as 17 months, but ended up being 20 months. So um, that just gives you an idea. It goes really quick. So either way, you're on the training. So there we go. So I'm just gonna tell you from my experience because you can go on the website and have a look yourself. It's called traintobeaprobationofficer.co.uk or .com. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm not affiliated in any way. So disclaimer there. But I just think it's nice to hear someone's actual real life experience who's gone through the training. So alongside doing that training day, so you will be working five days a week, so a 37 hour week. So one of those days is gonna be training. So you'll have four days in the office. So on them four other days, you will start to get cases and that will be based on what you're learning in your training. So say for example, if you've done your substance abuse training, you might get a, a service user who has substance misuse issues doesn't pair up exactly like that it won't be like okay friday you've done the training and monday you're going to get that person but hopefully the communication between you and your manager will be such that they will know that you've done that training and if there's any cases to do with that training then they can start giving you them now that's another thing i need to mention is through your training you will be getting you will have a manager so that's your probation officer manager and you will be part of a team so uh, when you're working in probation, we're all teams. So in my last office, I think there was two teams, team one, team two. So you will have a manager for team one. That's who you go to for um, any case issues, you know? You'll have supervision with that manager. You'll talk about your cases. Um, you'll talk about your progress. You will go to them about annual leave, sickness, all that. You'll then get a practice tutor assessor, shortened as a PTA. And that will be your, your kind of link between your manager and your like training. So they will be responsible for all your like training aspects. So that's just key things that you need to know. So as you start to get your cases, you'll, you'll be given a case and it will be up to you. Mate, normally, and which is kind of best practice as well, is that you'll get a case from the beginning. So what that means is, Say, for example, I remember my first case was theft. Um, and looking back, it was really, really like 
silly, but he had stolen, I think he'd stolen an apple off the market. It was really, really silly. But he'd stolen whatever, the apple off the market, um, but he had quite a lot of underlying issues as well. It was his first theft, he was in his 50s, and his life was just breaking down, and he'd stolen stuff, and he got a community order for it. So I got him from the beginning. So most likely you'll get someone from the beginning, so they've already been to court by that stage. They've already had a court report, a pre-sentence report, so then they come to you. So it's like, okay, they've got their community order, it needs to start. And the reason you'll get it from scratch is so you know the process and you know exactly what you need to do. So take that example, he had a community order. So I was like, okay, I need to make his first appointment. So you will ring him for his first appointment and you'll send out a letter. So admin can send out the letter. So what skills is that using? You need to start getting your diary in order. So you'll have um, your paper diary, but you also have your like Outlook is what they use. So you have your Outlook diary. So put it in your diary. You also need to let reception know that you've booked someone in. And then that kind of starts the chain of you starting to manage your own case. So you've rang that person, you've arranged an appointment. I remember this person, he would come in at half nine. Um, so he was my first appointment. I think it's half nine on a Monday. He would come in and then it's up to you to figure out, okay, what does this person need? What do we need to focus on? You'll get some directions from the court report. So the court report will say, okay, he's got supervision, which is your one-to-one -one sessions. He, I can't remember if he had unpaid work. He may have unpaid work, he may have a fine, but it will say in that report what um, factors led to his offending. And then you need to focus on that in your session. So this particular person, relationships were an issue because he was still married, but his relationship was breaking down with his wife. Um, and same relationship with his like older children was breaking down. He was drinking, he was not working at the time. So already you can see relationships are something you need to focus on. Substance misuse, drinking is what you need to focus on. You need to focus on relationships also with like family. You need to focus on work. Age was a factor because he was in his 50s. So think about age and how easy it is to get into work at that age. What work experience has he had? What mindset is he in? What is he thinking about being able to get into work? There's also some mental health issues there. He was quite low and depressed because of his situation. So already there's like seven key things. You might think, oh, it's just a theft offence. But actually it's seven things you can start focusing on in your supervision. So again, in your first one, you'll have an initial assessment to do. So that is an OASIS report. So hopefully we'll have had your training. You can actually start to write up your report on that person. And that report helps you make an assessment on what is his needs, what do you need to focus on, and what are the risks. And there is a deadline for that, so this is where your targets come in. So remember when you have your assessment day, they ask you how you manage deadlines and targets. So I think at the moment it's 10 days, so that's 10 working days, so essentially two weeks. You need to manage your diary that you get that assessment done, and also you factor in the study days or any other days that you've got off. So you'll have 10 days to do his assessment. So your first session will normally be quite a bit longer because you're obtaining and gathering information. But you're also trying to build that rapport because you're going to be working with him. I think this person was 12 months. You're going to be working with him for the next 12 months every week. You know, that will reduce eventually. But So you've got to obtain information and build that rapport. Um, so I hope that helps. If you want more examples like that, drop it below and I can do more examples of the whole process. Um, so you'll have that case. Another part of managing that case is if he doesn't attend for an appointment, what do you do? Well, you ring him up, you see where he is. You may need to start proceedings, like breach proceedings, which means you need to take it back to court if he's been out of contact for a long time and he's not attending because he's not complying. So that is another factor. And you will have training, breach training, but the nature of life of working in this job you may have to do a breach before you've had the training so just bear that in mind so you've got to think on your feet you've got to be able to ask people for help you have to have to get past that and just ask people for help even as a qualified probation officer because my caseload 
was largely people in prison, I rarely done a breach. So when I did have a breach, I would have to ask people. I would ask my colleagues, I would ask the admin, I would ask the breach officers, I would look at the policy directives. So don't ever feel like you're silly for asking. So the process for me went a bit like this. I, um, after I applied, I think it took about five months. So I got the job in. I got the acceptance in October, I think late October, early November, and then I started in March. So when I started, there was, I think before I started, or maybe the first week, there was like a, a, a big day where we could go and talk to previous probation officers and meet other people. Um, it might be different now because of COVID, but even after COVID, probation have got more remote friendly working so a lot of these things i'm talking about might actually be online so it might not be exactly the same but at least you get the gist of what is happening so once depends where you're working as well i worked in london so there was like 21 of us and we were split into two groups so it may be slightly different i know that some people have trained with just two or three of them in their office or in their location so really depends where you are so when you start for me, because I said mine was longer, but the first six months, so the first, yeah, six months is purely like training and working. And the whole point of the probation officer qualification is that you're actually working because that's where you get your experience. You're actually doing practice stuff. So you will from day one, not necessarily day one, but you will probably from the first, second week be actually directly working with your service users. So my first week in probation, um, I think the first two weeks, I, you do this thing called gateway to practice. And it's kind of practice, exactly what it says, all the practice issues that you need to know about the service, policies, um, all of that kind of practical stuff about working with offenders and working in your office. So it's like a workbook and you just work through that. And because it's your first two weeks anyway, you won't be getting um, your caseload then anyway. So you literally have the time and it gives you the time to actually look through all the like policies because there's so many policies and directives, even as a qualified probation officer, when you're doing your work, you may have to go back to those policies and directives. And to be honest, it can be a bit annoying to always have to go back through and find it. So the gateway to practice, it just gives you that kind of head start. And you'll probably have qualified officers coming to ask you things because you're like up to date. You've actually got time to look at all those things. So it is definitely worthwhile. Um, in my experience, it did feel a bit, what shall I say, lonely doing it because you see all the other probation officers or even the trainees ahead of you just doing the job and you're kind of just sitting there. You haven't really got any work to do. You know, your phone's not ringing, you're, you're new in the office and you're now just getting your head down doing this gateway to practice thing. So make sure in that time, you use that time to get to know your colleagues, um, chat with the people around you. If you are doing the gateway to practice working from home, try and go into the office if you can to do it, just to like build up that like social side of it. And as you're doing the gateway to practice, just ask questions if you can't find anything, because it's not only trainees that don't know where things are, Qualified officers don't know where things are either because things are moving and changing all the time. So just bear that in mind. Right, so the next part, so step two of the training is you will most likely be given a training schedule. So I was given a training schedule before I started. The reason they give you this is so you know what's coming up. And also, if you've got any holidays planned, try not to have them, and they will say this too as well, try not to have them in on that, on that first like six months, only because the training is quite intense and you don't really want to miss it. So in those training sessions, so it will probably be once a week, sometimes you'll have um, it a bit more intense, maybe like two times a week, but I'll just run through what I remember the training things were. Because there's no specific list and it may change slightly, but you will definitely have one about risk assessment. So a big part of the work as a probation officer is writing risk assessments, they're called OASIS. So you will learn the technical side, so like the IT side to actually you'll get all your login and you know the technical side. Then you will learn the actual like practical side, 
how to write an OASIS assessment, how to structure it. You will get um, a chance in the training to actually practice it. So that is quite an intense training because it's a brand new skill for you. Um, and then you will have one on um, Delius training, which is the um, case management system that we use on a daily basis. So that is more IT based training. Um, so it can be a bit dry, but you know, it has to be done. Risk assessment training. So we have risk assessments for um, like a domestic violence tool and a sex offender tool. You'll get that as well. So the sex offender one is the Risk Matrix 2000. So that is quite in depth as well. Um, so you will get that probably towards the end of your training, but more at the beginning, it's about just the main assessment tools. You will then get training days on things like motivational interviewing, because that's a big part of our job. Obviously, when you're working with people, you need to motivate them from a place of them being stuck, essentially, you know, being stuck with their old habits, their old ways, their old way of thinking. And it's your job to be able to move them forward. Even if you don't jump them forward to the end where they're not offending, just planting that seed that actually change can work for them, change is possible for them. So there's certain techniques, motivational interviewing that you will learn. You'll also learn how to work with all the different aspects of the offenders. So working with um, drugs and alcohol, that will be a training day. Working with people with personality disorders, working with people with mental health issues, um, substance misuse, I've said that. You will also get training on prisons, like working with people when they're in prison, working with people um, like in the community, so on supervision. You'll get one on um, domestic violence, and that's quite a big one because you do get a lot of domestic violence cases. But basically every, every aspect you will get training on, and it's six months training, so well, that was what mine was. If it has changed, it might be a little bit less, a little bit more, but it'll be like once a week training. So um, that's why you don't really want to miss it because to be behind and then you have to catch up, rebooking it is, you know, it's just, you don't really want to miss it. Another reason is a lot of these trainings are done with your like group. So it's really nice to actually get to know your group. So obviously I done this way before COVID times and remote working. So all of my training, we went to the head office in London and Every, that Friday was our training day. So every Friday we would have like training from, I think it was like half nine till half four. So if you're doing it remote, then obviously you'll be remote from half nine till half four. It might even be less time if it's remote. But if you're going actually into a, an office to do the training, then that's good as well because you actually get to meet people. But yeah, half nine till half four is most of the training days. Um, you'll get a lunch break. I think they normally, they're pretty flexible. They'll ask the group, oh, do you want like a 45 minute, half an hour or an hour lunch break? So then you can finish early. Um, mine was quite nice because it was every Friday. So our group would like go for lunch on a Friday because then you get to know them. Sometimes we'd go for drinks after, especially because we were in London, we would go for drinks. We even started a running club for about two sessions on a Friday afternoon in the summer. It didn't really last long. But we were just like soaking it up because we were in London and because we were in the head office, it was nice to just get to know people, go out and about and all that kind of thing. But even if you're doing it remote, try and like build up some social side with your um, group because it is really nice that you can bond together. You've got people going through the same thing as you at the same time and it's, yeah you'll make some really good friends as well that way. So I hope that helped you see exactly the process of when you're training and managing a caseload. So you will then start to build up with a few more cases. People have asked, what is the number of caseload you should have? That has changed. When I done my training and I asked that same question to people before, they were like, oh, 11, 12. But when I was doing the training, it progressed quite rapidly and I think way beyond 11, 12, I think it's like 22, 24, 25. It really depends on a number of factors. It depends on your office location. Where I was, it was a really, really busy office. So a lot of cases, um, a lot of staff turnover, staff offset, but it was mainly the heavy case load area, which tend to be 
more deprived areas. So consider that. Obviously management style, how good people manage the cases, how good communication between your PTA and your manager is. Um, so there were some times when my PTA had to go and say, look, can you stop giving cases? So it's communication. If you feel like it's getting too much, don't be afraid to say, look, can we hold off a minute? And you have a little chat with your manager, your PTA, and you can work through it. Don't just think you just have to get on with it. Um, so, okay, so you'll have your training. So that's the first six months. And then the last nine months is when you'll start with the uni. So my uni was Uni of Portsmouth. I know it depends on where you are in the country, that will change. And that was mainly remote. So at the time we went to central London and the lecturer would come and give us like a couple of lectures. Again, you'll have it in your timeline of how many times you have to go in. I think we only went four or five times. It wasn't that frequent. And it was mainly to um, obviously teach us stuff, but it was all stuff around what the next assignment was gonna be. Again, this was before remote times. So yours might be remote with the uni. Um, we had, I think it's three assessments to do. One was about risk, one was dangerousness, um, managing offenders or something. A lot of it to do with risk. And then the last one is a work-based learning project, which if you've done a degree, is very similar to dissertation. It's a bit less words, but it's practice dissertation. So you'll be able to choose two cases that you can link your theory to practice. I can do a separate video on that as well if you want. So during that time where you're doing the uni, your training days would have eased off, so you won't have training days, but you will still have a caseload to manage. You will still be working five days a week. And if there's any like internal training, so we used to have a lot of internal training, then you still need to attend that. It's good to attend that as well, not only to get to know your colleagues, but just to get to know the workings of your office. And if there's any like, extras that you need to know about um, and it's just being open to learning and soaking it all in um, so I hope that helped you just understand and get into what actually the training will involve now I'll move on to salary and the benefit before I move on to salary and benefits I'll remember one more thing so you will be getting um, as a part of your case management side of things you will be getting observed, so you'll get observed by your PTA, your practice tutor, assessor, and she will assess you. It is really nerve wracking, but try and build a good relationship with your tutor because that helps, you know, it helps you ease into it. But they will observe you and then you'll have a discussion and it's more a reflective discussion. So they might ask you things like, okay, how do you think that session went? What was your goal for that session? Um, what things could you have done better? What could you have learned? And it's not to catch you out, it's just to help you learn and improve and help you be a reflective person. And you will also have a thing called professional discussions. I really like them personally, but not everyone likes them. So they'll give you a topic, um, let's say working with substance misuse, and they'll say, okay, we're gonna have a discussion on that. And your tutor will ask you questions about substance misuse and you'll need to answer it based on what you've done with your cases and give examples of what you've done with your cases and also some of your knowledge from the training so again mixing it both up but it's just different ways that you'll get assessed right let's move on to the pay and the benefit so the pay has actually increased from when i done it so it's now twenty two thousand nine hundred and fifty Wait there. So it's now 22,924, so nearly 23K, which is quite good for a starting salary. I think when I done it, it was like 21. So um, your salary does increase. It does take a long time to increase, but it does. It says on the trainee website, if you actually work in certain areas, you'll get a thousand pounds more. I'll tell you what areas. So these are the areas here where you actually get £1,100 more. And then you, if you're working in London, you'll get the London rating, which is it's 3889 for the London rating. The reason there's some areas that get more, I think it's because they're in high demand, so that it's really hard to fill their spots and they're high demand areas. Um, one thing to bear in mind with the London rating, it looks like you get a lot, you know, 3889 but consider your rent is going to be more 
and if you're not living there, your travel. So my travel into London was, I think, basically 600, it's 595. So it was 600 pound per month. So your London waiting might not always cover it, but just think of the future, you know, you're gonna do it for a short time and then your salary will go up. So your salary as a probation officer is 30,000. I'll put the exact one here. Um, again, it's gone up from when I done it. I think when I qualified, it was like 29 something.